to Smart Life. Now you've heard me talk repeatedly uh, about how we need to unite people on all sides of the political spectrum because I truly believe that politics in the United States is not about right versus left like Steve Dace and I just talked about. It's the elite versus we the people. And recently there have been issues like the VA scandal that have caused people to kind of come together and really unite around an issue that we all see clearly. No matter where you stand on military intervention, there are a few people who are okay with the way who, who are okay with the way our veterans are being treated, or they wouldn't be condoning it. They wouldn't be complicit in it. And uh, so, those of us who feel differently about that, we're uniting together. And one college professor who is showing us ways we can unite on many other issues is Matt Zwolinski, and he joins me here in studio today. I'm going to pretend like I didn't have to rehearse your name all morning just to get it right. <laughs> okay. I don't know what it is about that word, but that's hard. Does anyone not stutter on that word? The first you, time they hear? you are the first one I've ever heard. Well, I that's practice. Not stuttered on practice it. makes perfect. <laughs> but no, I love what you you call yourself the a bleeding heart libertarian. Um, first, my guess, my first question off the bat, having just met you for the very first time, is uh, how do you get away with that in a university setting? Well, I'm in academic philosophy, and philosophy is actually a fairly broad-minded discipline. Uh, philosophers like to focus on arguments. So it doesn't matter how crazy your view is in, in the eyes of the people you're talking to. In fact, the crazier the view, the better sometimes. As long as you've got an argument to back it up, uh, they're usually pretty willing to listen to you. So talking to the constitutional conservatives out there at the moment, uh, and, and every constitutional conservative has, you know, Aunt Hilda or their mom or their dad or their sister or their spouse or their child who believes they're a liberal now. Yeah. And when you hear them talk, you start listening and you, you start hearing, you're not really a liberal. I know you think you're a liberal. Maybe you think it's cool to be a liberal, but you're not really a liberal. Uh, what are the issues that are the best ones to pick to have that initial conversation about? Uh, I'm just saying to connect on, not to start right. to try to transform anybody, because you don't do that right away, and we all know that. But right. what are the issues that, that are those that bind? Well, I think the biggest issue on which libertarians and liberals or constitutional conservatives and liberals can make common ground is the issue of freedom. Right. Liberals, historically and as a matter of contemporary practice, mm -hmm. I think, are committed to the idea that freedom matters. Now, most people on the left today, when they talk about freedom, it's mostly in the language of civil liberties. So they take very seriously issues of freedom of speech, uh, the freedom to vote, freedom mm -hmm. of religion. Mm -hmm. We libertarians and constitutional conservatives would like to see them take that idea and move a little farther with it, right? So just as they think that freedom is important in terms of speech, we want them to recognize that economic freedom matters. We want them to recognize that strong rights of private property are an important bulwark of freedom. Yes. And for some reason, they have a blind spot to that aspect of freedom. But you're not, you're not asking them to radically change their values. You're asking them to take a value that they already have and extend it a little bit further. So one of the conversations that I feel uh, is most effective once I've built that relationship with someone who believes they're a liberal, but I'm hearing little smacks of, you know, uh, maybe the fact that they might at some point convert, um, is, is, is this whole notion that somehow there's a freedom in acting however you want, even if there's not a law to support it, but then asking governments permission to create a law to support whatever freedom it is you're wanting, right? Right. Uh, they don't seem to understand that that is actually withdrawing your own liberty. They don't seem to understand that if you have totalitarianism, right. ultimately, they're coming for those people first. That's right. Because we've seen it historically. They always come for the same people first. And it's those very people that think they're being protected by big daddy government. And then government just sort of comes and takes their heads. At what point in your conversation with a liberal can you begin to have those kinds of conversations? I think you could have those conversations fairly early if you introduce them in the right kind of way. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I think one of the most eye-opening insights for me when I was beginning to explore political philosophy was just the recognition that government is force, that when you pass a law, even a mundane law, and I mean, I don't have to, it doesn't have to be a law sending right. people to the gulag or anything, even a law requiring people uh, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
speed limits. Speed, sp speed limit laws, uh, laws that restrict the kinds of foods that restaurants can service, uh, laws that regulate prescription drugs. These laws are ultimately backed by force. Absolutely. When you ask the government to pass a law, you're, at, you're not telling the government to ask people to be nicer, to be healthier. Right. And you can't legislate that, by the way. You can't legislate you manners. Ever. You can't legislate morality. No. All that the government can do is wield its big stick and beat people over the head if it doesn't do what it tells them to do. Well, and you, and you on, on the one side, you say you can't legislate morality, and I hear what you're saying. You can't actually cause people to behave in a certain way. Right. But every law that's ever been created is based on someone's morality. So I always get nervous when we talk about morality because I think if we, if we pretend that there's no morality in law, then that means we have <clears throat> no wheelhouse of honor to even go into to establish. We have no tradition. We, have, we, can't, we can't care about the Constitution. We can't that's care right. about the Bill of Rights. Those things are essential. They are a form of morality, and they are... Uh, put into legislation for a purpose, just like even a speed limit is is That's a form right. of morality, if we want to get down to it. But you can't force people to do it. And usually, especially a great example is guns, uh, you can put all the gun laws you want on the books, and we've seen mass murderer after mass murderer uh, not be caught by any of those laws. Right. And what happens is the law-abiding people tend to abide by the new laws, right. and the non-law-abiding people keep doing exactly what they were doing. That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. And this is an important point on which I think libertarians and conservatives have some common ground, right? So libertarians, too, believe, generally speaking, that there is a real morality out there and that it's important, and it's important that law be grounded on and consistent with that morality. The difference is that libertarians don't think that we ought to use the law to enforce morality. So mor law has a moral basis, but just because something's the moral thing to do doesn't mean that it's okay to use the law, which is, remember, force, to compel people to do it. Like, I think if you've got a nice mother who's treated you well, right, and done right by you all her life, you should call her on Mother's Day, right? You should speak nicely to her. But I don't want the government forcing people to do that, even though I think objectively it's the morally right thing to but do. But see, then what they do is they turn that back on you and you, they say, you hate mothers? Oh, you must hate women, too. You don't want a law that says you have to call your mother on Mother's Day? What is the matter with you? You're a misogynist. I mean, just like that, they turn it on you. Right. How do you battle back from that? I think the, 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 the point is to keep the focus on force, right? The point is to make a distinction between... I like that government is force. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> and we need to make a distinction between what's morally right to do and what's morally right to force other people to do. Mm -hmm. Right? There are a lot of ways in which we can try to get people to live better lives. Mm -hmm. We can reason with them. We can engage them. We can try to inspire them and motivate them. But generally speaking, if you've got a friend who you think is throwing away their lives, you don't have the right to march over there with a gun and compel them to live the way you think they ought to live. Right. Why is it any different when the government tries to do that? Yeah, I think it's a brilliant concept. I hope you're reaching the hearts of lots of millennials in your crusade here. The Bleeding Heart Libertarian. Uh, BleedingHeartLibertarians.com is the website. That's you're right. on Twitter at Matt Zwolinski. Just spelled just exactly like it sounds, actually. <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, Any place else you want us to know we can find you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. I'm unfortunately all over the social media. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that's absolutely awesome because I think your message is really important. We're actually going to have a discussion coming up next with a couple of millennials. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Thank you so much, Matt Zwolinski, for being on the show Thank with us today. Me.